look into the weight room and not go in. And I didn't go in. I just looked in and saw guys working out. It gave me a, a warm feeling that maybe things are going to get better and we may have a football season and all that stuff. With that, we bring in the former Oklahoma State center, a uh, guy that, uh, you know, uh, had a, a great reputation for being a guy that maximized his potential and, and played his butt off every time he was on the football field. Brad Lundblade. Brad joins us now. Brad, first of all, uh, good afternoon. And, and how are you doing? Catch us up. Hey, Robert. Thanks for having me on. Um, well, I'm, I'm doing well. I'm, uh, I'm back home in Dallas right now. In training, working out. Uh, we just wrapped up our last week of virtual meetings with the Jet uh, two weeks ago. And so uh, just been working from home, working out, uh, staying in shape and uh, getting ready for, for whenever we get the call to head back. Um, I'm actually getting married uh, this Sunday. So I don't know if you've seen that uh, on social media yes. and stuff. Getting, getting married this Sunday. So, um, you know, super excited about that. Been really busy uh, and all that fun stuff. So, uh, so it's been fun. You know, it's been been definitely different with uh with coronavirus hitting and you know not being able to go back for OTAs and uh this off season has, has certainly looked different than than I had expected but uh you know there's a lot of exciting things happening and you know it's uh, it's been good. And I wanted to congratulate you on the wedding because like so many of us uh I know me and, and a lot of my friends uh you you uh, the old term in football is you outkicked your coverage but uh, you, you did quite well and I'm excited for you and happy. And you got a, you got a beautiful wife and, and hopefully, uh, a, a, a beautiful, uh, family in the future, in your future. So that's, that's fantastic. Well, thank you. Yeah. I'm, I'm definitely lucky to have her. And, uh, you know, they say you only got a full one, so I'm trying to, I'm trying to, you know, marry her before she changes her mind. So I'm, uh, I'm lucky for sure. I've been I've been fooling I've been fooling Lynn for a long time. So hey, um yeah, and how does how does COVID nineteen because we've had a wedding in our family. I know that uh my son Zach that uh is a, is up at NEO, he was at a wedding Saturday, uh one of his former players. And uh COVID nineteen has certainly changed the wedding industry. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's been hectic for sure. Um, you know, we, we had kind of already made all of our original plans before the virus hit. And then, uh, kind of in the early stages of the virus, we, we just decided, okay, we're going to push along as, as we were planning. And then, uh, you know, as the virus kind of started to progress and get worse, we had to make some adjustments. Um, so, you know, we had to, we had to cut down our numbers a little bit and, uh, you know, make things a little bit smaller, but, um, you know, we're just thankful that we're able to get married. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, it's about, it's about the marriage, not the wedding. And, uh, you know, it's still, you know, it's still going to be a great celebration with our family and, and some close friends and stuff like that. And so, so it'll be a great weekend. And at the end of the day, you know, we're just excited that we can have a wedding. Cause you know, for a while, uh, it looks like we might not be able to. So, uh, so we're, we're excited for sure. Yeah. Uh, best to you. And, and uh, best to your event uh, this this coming weekend. Um, Thank you. New York Jets, New York Jets, and you've you've seen several organizations. I think I I think of you most uh, in a uh, you know in the uniform with the Bengals, uh, but mm-hmm. you've also been with the the Seahawks briefly with the Panthers. How's this been with the New York Jets? It's been great. Um, you know, last season was was kind of a whirlwind. Uh, you know, I. My rookie year, I spent the whole year with the Bengals, uh, and then last season, uh, I was in training camp with Cincinnati, uh, got released at the end of camp, signed with Carolina, uh, was there until week 14, got released, and then finished the season uh, with the Jets. So it was it was a wild year being on three different teams, uh, but it was a fun it was a fun season for sure, and I'm excited to be in New York. Uh, my O line coach in New York, Frank Pollock, is the same O line coach that I had my rookie year in Cincinnati. Uh, so it was great to get reunited with him and, and be able to, you know, come in and already know his system, his terminology and, and kind of how he coaches. And, uh, we had a great relationship with in Cincinnati. And so it was great to get reunited with him and, uh, and have a fresh start with the Jets. And so it's been great so far. Yeah. And, uh, again, yeah, your, your color wheel is, uh, it's crazy. 
<laughs> I hope you've been able to keep a, a jersey. If you know, that's that's uh, one of my one of my good friends and, and an OSU player from way back, uh, and he's he's passed on, Kerry Blanchard. But uh, you know, Kerry ended up, I think, playing with eleven different NFL teams. And I always told him, I said, Kerry, you got the best, you got the best uh, decor for any kind of game room in the world, or or, or uh, <laughs> because you've got framed jerseys from all these teams that he played for. I'm like, man, you you got about half the NFL in here. But uh, uh, it's it's just good in the league. It's just good to have a job, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, it's been it's been a whirlwind. I mean, four different teams in two years. Uh, it's been been a crazy ride but uh you know i just i always feel fortunate that i'm able to do what i do and uh you know there's a lot of guys who grow up with this dream and um you know aren't able to make it and so uh they always say that you know the nfl stands for not for long and so uh you know i don't know how long i'll be able to do this and how long i'll be able to play but uh you know i definitely feel fortunate for every opportunity that i get and no matter what team it's with you know i'm just happy to have a job and and i'm going to show up and and work hard every day and, and uh, do the absolute best that I can, no matter what jersey I'm wearing. What are the biggest differences? And I, we, we've talked to Mason, you know, Mason Rudolph. We've talked to, you know, other guys that are, that are in the league, uh, James Washington and so forth. But when you're an offensive lineman, which is such a physical position, give me the rundown uh, of how different – being in the NFL is opposed to being in college from an offensive lineman standpoint, let's take physical first. Yeah. Well, I mean, first off the game is, is much more physical uh, in the NFL. I mean, uh, you know, the college game is physical, but it's just another step up to the NFL. And uh, you know, you think about uh, just the level of talent in the NFL uh, you know, the types of athletes that you're going against day in and day out. I mean, even, you know, practice squad players in the NFL are better than, you know, really good college players. And so uh, just the physical level of athletes that you're going against day in and day out uh, is so much better in the NFL, uh, as well as the fact that, you know, you're no longer playing against 18 to 21 year old kids. You know, you're playing against grown men who have been in the league for seven, eight, nine years uh, who have really developed their bodies and, um, you know, are, are truly grown men. And so, so it's just a, a whole nother level of, of physicality. Uh, and then along with that, uh, you know, really just the length of season makes all the difference in the world as well. Um, you know, obviously college playing a 12 game season uh, in college, I thought that was long. And then you get to the NFL and uh, you know, you go through training camp and then you go through a, a 16 week season and, and it's a grind. I mean, really between camp and then, uh, you know, a 16 game season, you're looking at about, 21 22 weeks straight uh with no breaks other than you know one bye week and so so it's a long physical season and uh you know it definitely takes a toll on you late in the season uh but uh you know it's it's uh it's been a great experience and it's definitely been an, an adjustment getting used to the the physicality and the long season of the NFL uh there's definitely things that you have to learn like how to take care of your body better and uh you know eat right and and do all those types of things to uh to maintain your longevity throughout the season, but, uh, but it's been great. You know, it's definitely been an, an adjustment and it's different, but, uh, but I love it. Now from a mental standpoint, you, you just brought up, you know, Frank Pollock, uh, the, the offensive line coach that that's a big advantage for you, you know, his system, his terminology, but the mental standpoint, because, you know, it's, it's, uh, I know the OSU playbook offensively was extensive, but, uh, it's even more technical and even bigger in the NFL, right? Right. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, I, w I would say that a typical NFL playbook is probably three times in terms of volume what we had at, at Oklahoma State, just in different types of formations and plays and just the different things that you have to know in the playbook. Uh, and so that's definitely a challenge, and especially uh, the way my journey has gone, uh, being on four different teams in two years. Uh, it seems like as soon as you – kind of get hold of one playbook all of a sudden you got to move and, and learn another and so it's been challenging uh you know you definitely have to take ownership of making sure that you're in your playbook watching film uh studying every day you know making sure that you're taking ownership of that uh but it's been great and I think it's challenged me in a lot of ways and uh it's allowed me to have a, a broader understanding of the game in general uh just being in different offensive systems and being forced to kind of learn on the run and learn quickly 
uh, it's challenged me in a lot of ways, and I think it's made me better. So it's, uh, it's been a challenge, but it's been good. How have the vertical workouts worked? Uh, the virtual workouts, I should say, not vertical, but virtual workouts. How have those worked for you here in the off season? Yeah, I think every team has done it a little differently. Uh, it's been interesting to kind of see how each tro- how each team has chosen to approach it. Uh, just because we're we're really kind of in uncharted territories. I mean, not, nothing like this has ever really happened before. And so, I know with the Jets, uh, they've been sending us workouts through an app, uh, and and really, you know, they don't they don't track what you can do. There's, there's really no way that they can, uh, necessarily track you, but, uh, you know, they send you workouts and, uh, you know, the, the responsibility is completely on you as a player to, to make sure that you're working out and, and staying in shape and doing what you can do. And so, uh, it's definitely been different. Um, I, I know, you know, most guys would prefer to, to be with the team, be with your teammates and, and be able to work out together. Uh, and so it definitely adds a, another level of, uh, taking ownership and accountability and, and putting that onus on yourself to uh, to be able to make sure that you're doing everything that you can do, uh, but it's been good. You know, I've always been a self motivated motivated type of guy, and uh, you know, it hasn't been a problem for me. So uh, I've been fortunate that as all the gyms and stuff were shut down, uh, I have some weights in the garage that I've been able to use, and so I've been continuing to train and and get better throughout that throughout that period. And uh, you know, now gyms are starting to open back up so i'm back with my trainer in dallas uh working out with some guys across the league and uh so that's been good but it's definitely been different uh having having virtual workouts you know having things sent to you through the app having to keep track and you know work out by yourself it's it's definitely been different how tight um are you on what you eat i mean how how much are you really uh do you really monitor uh the way you eat what you eat so forth yeah, I mean, I, I track it pretty closely. Um, it, it seems like when it comes to offensive linemen, most guys have one or two problems. There's there's guys like me who tend to be lighter and have to try to eat more calories to keep weight on. Uh, and then there's guys that tend to be uh, naturally heavier who, you know, have to make sure that they're, they're eating lighter to keep their weight down. And so uh, for me, it's really all about tracking my calories, making sure that I'm eating enough. Because uh, it's a challenge, you know, when, when you're training – uh, twice a day and, and doing all the things that I do, um, you know, making sure that I'm getting enough calories, uh, getting enough protein, uh, recovering well and doing all those things, uh, not only to keep weight on, but to keep good weight on and, you know, to stay lean and strong and, and to recover well. Uh, so I track all that stuff. I make sure that I'm, I'm taking care of my body and, and doing all the right things. All right. Uh, and again, Brad Lundblade with us, former Oklahoma State Center. Um, you know, one thing that this has taught me so far, and, and, and Brad, Oklahoma State has come in in three waves, uh, three phases. They've got all three on campus now. They've actually started some workouts as of last Wednesday, but they're small groups. And, and uh, again, you know, keeping the social distancing. And these are workouts. Uh, the, the strength staff is in there, but they're not really coaching. They're, they're kind of monitoring. Uh, I think – once we get into the, the month of July, though, the, the strength staff will be able to jump in and, and kind of uh, take control and, and steer it. But right now, these are these are these voluntary workouts. But the testing and everything, the one thing it's taught me, if we're going to have a college season, uh, it's definitely going to depend on, on how disciplined the athletes are to, and you know how hard it is on a college campus. Guys want to hang out at the student union. There's all kinds of people on campus. People tend to be social. Uh, and it's it's going to be pretty restrictive. NFL probably has a better chance because it's a, it's a nine to five or eight to five job. You go in, you spend all day at the complex and you're going to go home to your new wife. I mean, you're, you can, you can be a little more, uh, reclusive outside of work, but, um, your thoughts on, on how we're going to do a football season within COVID-19. Yeah. I mean, I think right now, to be honest, I don't know that anyone knows what it's going to look like. Uh, I think what you said was spot on about, I think the NFL certainly has a, a better chance of making it through the season than college um, for a couple of reasons. I mean, one, just sheer numbers. I mean, you look at a college team, uh, I think yeah. there's around 130 division one uh, teams with, you know, over a hundred student athletes on each team. Uh, so that's a lot of guys to try to monitor on a college campus uh, day in and day out. 
Um, and then you throw in, you know, traveling to games and, you know, like you said, just the social aspect of being on a college campus. Uh, you know, you're dealing with 18, 21 year olds. You're not dealing with professionals who are getting paid, uh, you know, to do their job. You know, you're dealing with, you know, 18 to 21 year olds who want to have a college experience, who want to, you know, go to parties and social events and, and be around other people. And so, um, you know, I think all those factors kind of go into, to making the college season a little bit more challenging to pull off in a, in an environment like this. Uh, I think, like you said, the NFL is going to probably have a lot easier time than college will. Uh, like I said, just because of sheer numbers, you know, you have 32 teams with, with 53 players on your roster. And so it's much easier, uh, to put those 53 guys in a controlled environment where they're, you know, basically just going to the facility every day, coming home and, you know, doing that every single day and, and not getting out too much. And so, um, so it'll be interesting. I mean, I think, I think there's a lot of question marks. Um, and I think, uh, a lot of this football season will just have to come down to, you know, kind of seeing how it all plays out. And, uh, you know, I think there's a lot of questions of, you know, how do you handle an outbreak and what do you do if, uh, you know, your starting quarterback gets the virus, you know, three days before a big game, you know, how do you handle that? And, um, you know, I think there's a lot of question marks and, I don't know that anyone really has a perfect answer. And, um, you know, I, I was listening to uh, David Silver, the commissioner of the NBA, talk the other day. And obviously the NBA has their whole operation laid out in Orlando of, of what their uh, season is going to look like for the rest of the year. And uh, I thought one thing that he said probably, you know, goes for a lot of sports. He said, you know, right now we're just trying to pick the best of a lot of bad options. And so, um, you know, I, I don't think that there's really any way that we're going to have a perfect season this year. Um, you know, I think student athletes are going to get the virus. NFL players are going to get the virus. Um, you know, there's going to be outbreaks. There's going to be times when key players have to quarantine themselves. Uh, and it's going to look a lot different. And, you know, I think to some extent, teams are just going to have to roll with the punches. And, and uh, you know, if someone gets sick, then, you know, they always say next man up. And so it's, it's definitely going to be interesting and um, it's definitely going to make for a wild season for sure, because I think you could see, you know, some top teams fall simply because, you know, they might have a few players that have to, to sit out for a game or two. Um, and so I think it'll be really interesting. And, and like I said, I'm, I'm not convinced that anyone really knows what it's going to look like. I think, you know, everyone can make the plans of what the season is going to look like and how they're going to handle it. Um, but at the end of the day, um, I think as we've learned from the way this, this year has gone just for the world in general, you know, you can make plans, but, uh, you know, when something like this, this comes into play, um, you know, you're kind of at the mercy of the virus just to see how it goes. And so, um, you know, it'll be interesting. You know, I think, I know I'm, I'm speaking for every college ball fan when I say, I, I hope that there's football. I hope that, uh, you know, we're able to have a season as planned, um, but like I said, it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. And I think to some extent, uh, you know, we're just going to have to roll with the punches and, and kind of see see how all of this stuff plays out. Brad Lundblade, former Oklahoma State Cowboys center with the uh, New York Jets now and uh, getting ready for uh, a wedding this week. And then shortly thereafter, hoping to uh, to head to training camp and and uh, work his way in with the uh, with the Jets. Last thing, I, I didn't want to. I didn't want to throw this out in the beginning, and I don't necessarily want to throw it out at the end. But it's it's pertinent. I know, I know how much you care about Oklahoma State. I know how much you care about your alma mater. And and uh, last week was a a really rough week for those of us around Stillwater. And understanding, uh, I, I I do not blame Chuba Hubbard. I do not blame the players. I, I think Mike. Mike came out, Mike, Coach Gundy came out and said he made a mistake with the shirt. Uh, but your, your, your thoughts, because you've been through the program, and we had a lot of people on last week. We had Rashetti Jones, we had Dion Amati, Philip Redwine Bryant, uh, and, uh, and you, were, you were in the program for a long time. I just I don't think I don't think Mike Gundy's a racist. I don't think we have a racist problem at Oklahoma State, but I do think that there might be a, a chance to build stronger relationships. And I don't want to put words in your mouth, but what were you thinking from afar when when you saw all that last week? Yeah, well, I uh, you know I first became aware of it on Twitter a few hours after it all started, and um, you know obviously it started off rocky, and there was a lot of 
negative things being said about the program and about Gundy. Um, you know, but I think the important thing here is that, um, you know, obviously, you know, Chuba said this in, in the video that came out later, and, and I think that he would probably say this as well. I, I think it probably should have been handled internally uh, rather than on Twitter. I, I would say that. Um, but as far as, you know, where things have gone from there, I think, I think things have, have, uh, you know, gone pretty positive in terms of, obviously it started off rocky. There was a lot of negative things going around. Um, but ever since then, you know, I, I've talked to a few guys that are in the program and, uh, they said that, you know, players have been able to have conversations with Gundy. Uh, you know, he was able to, to come to a better understanding of where the players were coming from, um, how they were feeling. And, and now they've been able to unify as a team and, and push for changes that I think we'd all like to see for, for racial equality. And so, uh, you know, I would agree with you. I don't think Mike Gunny's a racist and, and, you know, I, I know there were a lot of negative things said about him, but I think, uh, you know, at the end of the day, you know, all this is about listening to one another, understanding one another better and, uh, you know, ultimately making changes to make our society better. And I think those are things that everyone wants to see. And, um, you know, I wish that, uh, you know, things could have been handled a little bit differently by everyone, you know, to where it, it didn't get the negative press that it did uh, for the program. But but look, at the end of the day, I think it's turned into something positive. And, uh, you know, hopefully the team and, and Gundy as well can continue to unify and, and ultimately push for uh, for the changes that we'd all like to see, which is, you know, a, a society without racism and, and where, you know, we have equality for all people. And, um, you know, I think that that's ultimately what uh, what everyone wants to see. And so, um, you know, if there's any, any good thing about this, it's that, you know, it appears that the team and Gundy were able to take a, a negative situation and, and hopefully turn it into something positive. So, um, you know, hopefully that they can, I hope that they can continue to, to unify and, and continue to, uh, you know, make those changes. Cause I think, you know, like I said, it started off in a negative way, but I think it's ultimately turned into something positive. So hopefully it can continue to, to move in that direction. I know this, uh, having been around Brad Lundblade for a long time when he was an Oklahoma State Cowboy and now seeing what he's uh, doing in the NFL, I think there's there's a reason that uh, even undrafted, you have uh, you have had some staying power in the NFL. And that's not just because of your physical ability, but uh, it was something else you lent to Oklahoma State. Uh, you're smart. You're a leader. People respect you. And I think people like to have that in their organization. And so I, uh, I don't blame, uh, I don't blame Carolina picking you up last year, and I don't blame the Jets picking you up. I think that it's a smart pickup. So, best of luck with the wedding coming up this week. I know that'll go well. And then uh, I'd say this to the whole football world: best of luck for a football season this year. I'm, I'm hoping like you are, we have one, and and hoping we can do it and keep uh, people safe. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I appreciate you having me on, Robert. I'm always happy to do it. And uh, like I said, I, I hope that uh, hope that we can have a football season this year. Hey, uh, best of luck. Keep training. And uh, again, we'll be thinking about you this weekend uh, on, on your special day for you and your bride and, and uh, looking forward to that. So, hey, thanks, Brad. All right. Thanks, Robert. All right. Brad Lundblade, uh, Oklahoma State. Cowboy alum, center, and uh, man, tough guy.